Thank you guys for watching 200 episodes of The Completionist. Achievement unlocked. Limited edition Yeti merch has arrived. To celebrate our large milestone, we've got some real cool merchandise that's available for a limited time at the yeti.com slash that one video gamer. First up is our brand new 200th episode t-shirt. Old school completionist fans will enjoy adding this shirt to their previous 100th special episode shirt. So make sure to add this bad boy to your collection. To kick off the launch for my brand new personal channel, we've got our brand new completionist universe t-shirt. This one was a con exclusive, but we are bringing it back just for the holiday for a limited time. And if you're a big fan of pins, we've got a That One Video Gamer pin. The quality is top notch, and you guessed it, back by popular demand, we've got a brand new 200th episode completionist poster. Join me on the journey of completing another 100 games by completing them for yourselves. And when you're done, give it your own completionist rating. To commemorate the launch of the special event, we are printing 200 and only 200 special edition gold Bumblebee posters. So act now if you want them. On checkout, be sure to click the special edition in the drop down to specify. Again, there's only 200 of these posters. These items, like last time, will go quickly, so don't hesitate. And for you guys who missed out last time, or maybe you're just brand new to the show overall, we brought back our first 100 games poster, so if you missed it the first time around, you can buy both posters as a bundle. Two posters, 200 games, all in your completionist collection. Now all of this merch is going to be pretty limited, so be sure to act fast. The last time we did this, we got an overwhelming amount of support in a good way. So, to ensure that everyone gets their orders on time, items will be delivered as early as January 2017. If you guys want to check out all of these awesome items, you can go to the yeti.com slash that one video gamer. And at the very least, from the bottom of our hearts here at TOVG, thank you guys for all of your incredible support. One second. Just let me finish this fight, all right? God damn. Okay, hold on a minute. I'm coming. Yes! Oh. It's you. Oh, wait, no. You're here for Ted, right? Really? I was just barely getting started. Hey, don't I get some kind of last request or something? One last game to complete for the road? Really? I get to play any game I want? Oh, thanks, you're the best. I'll be right back. Okay. Um. Uh. 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 Uh -huh. uh. uh. <laughs> All right, I've got the perfect game. Huh? <sighs> eh? Eh? Oh, come on! Don't give me that. You said I could complete any game I wanted. Don't worry about it. This should take no time at all. Yes! everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist. 200 episodes, 200 games, 200 times I welcomed you to the show. I can't believe that. That is a feat that I will never, ever believe that I accomplished. Um, 
it's because of you guys. Without all of you guys continually watching every single Friday, we've been through a lot. We've been through a lot of laughs, a lot of tears, uh, a lot of amazing feats, a lot of heartbreak, a lot of drama, a lot of genuine good times, and I want to celebrate it big. I want to celebrate it with a game that I knew everyone at home loves to talk about, a game that I know nothing about, and a game that I wanted to share with you today. And that, my friends, is Chrono Trigger. Also, Death is here. He won't leave me alone, and he won't go away until I complete this game and he'll take my life. Did you know that Kingdom Hearts tryouts were last week? You could have been Death 6, or X with Death. Thedx. We do high concept bits in here on the show. This is the first one in a long while. Enjoy. There are certain things out there that almost everyone agrees are great, but when you ask them what makes those things great, you never really get a straight answer. Breaking Bad, The Beatles, in and out universally praised, but you'd be hard-pressed to find any two people who share a common reason for loving them. Usually, you'll just get something like, I don't know, it's just great, and a weird judgmental look to boot. One of the best examples of this phenomenon from within the world of video games is Square's Chrono Trigger, often cited not only as one of the best RPGs of all time, but as the best game of all time. Chrono Trigger is a name that even casual players might recognize, even if they have absolutely no idea what the hell it is. So up until last year, I had never played Chrono Trigger. It wasn't on my top 10 list. Luckily, every year, Jesse Cox, Dodger, and the rest of our office pals have a yearly JRPG stream, and last year's was the 20th anniversary of Chrono Trigger. 40,000 people tuned in to watch me fail at this game, and immediately it became one of my favorite SNES titles. But I've never attempted to explain why I love it so much, or why everyone and their mom seems to love it too. But that's all about to change, baby. I'm hoping that completing the game will allow me to crack the case and explain why everyone raves about Chrono Trigger. And yes, I will be attempting to speak for others. Please forgive any incorrect assumptions I make, and please file all your complaints directly to at on Twitter. Thank you. In order to unravel this mystery, we should probably start at the game's beginnings, which were the outcome of the collaboration of three of the most powerful Japanese entities known to man. Outside of Mechagodzilla, of course. Chrono Trigger started as the brainchild of Hironobu Sakaguchi, the father of Final Fantasy. Yuji Horii, who blessed the world with the Dragon Quest series, and the man who sowed the seeds of otakuism across the West, the creator of mother-loving Dragon Ball Z, Akira Toriyama. For what unholy purpose could these legends possibly converge? Apparently, their goal was to create a game that had never been done before, and eventually, time travel was decided on as a central aspect of their game's narrative and mechanics. When it finally released in 1995, Chrono Trigger sold quicker than fresh Amiibo, and the critics seemed to love its humor, its impressive graphics, and its innovative battle system. But plenty of games have also been praised for these very same things which means that there's still a quality to Chrono Trigger that's yet to be defined. Even though I may have beaten the game in the past, that's not really going to make completing it now much easier. This is a JRPG after all, and as we all know, they tend to be make-yourself-comfortable kinds of long. Right, dude? He's, uh, he's, he's just staring at me now. <laughs> at least I think he is. I don't see any eyes under that hood. He's creepy. Why is Death in the office? Who invited him? I don't even know why he's here. Here's the plan. I'm gonna attempt to max out every character to level 99, making sure to learn every character's special tech abilities along the way. But the biggest challenge will be unlocking Chrono Trigger's 13 different endings. 13! Now normally I'd be depressed at having to beat a game that many times, but for some reason, I uh, don't mind it this time. I will take all the time in the world. I will take my time. 
I don't expect the experience to get too rocky, but I am worried about how playing this game so many times in a row will change my outlook on it. This game was definitely not intended to be binged this way, so I'm hoping that doing so won't color my impressions too much. It would suck to end up hating the thing that I'm supposed to be explaining my love for. That would be like Shakespearean levels of irony. You know what I'm talking about, right, dude? You know, you were there in Shakespeare's time? Look, if you're just gonna fucking sit there and wait for me to complete this game and then kill me, then you're gonna have to come up with some kind of personality here. Crack a joke, clear your throat, go kill Ted, do something! Go take the office dogs for a walk, I don't know! Just don't sit here over my shoulder, God! Jesus! If you're not at all familiar with Chrono Trigger, you might take a look at it and say, man, that's an average looking PlayStation game. And then you might spit out your beverage when you find out that it's actually a Super Nintendo title. Since it was released towards the end of the Super Nintendo's life cycle, Chrono Trigger got to squeeze every bit of juice out of that machine, creating a 16-bit tour de force. And it's not even the game's technical aspects, but rather its narrative qualities that might just stick with the players the longest. That narrative begins with our silent hero Chrono attending a local millennial fair. He bumps to a girl named Marley, an excitable young lady who decides to tag along with Chrono for some weird reason. They head off to meet Luca, Chrono's buddy with a genius level intellect and a brand new teleportation machine. Marley has obviously never seen the fly with Jeff Goldblum because she's way too eager to try that teleportation device out. And wouldn't you know it, her pendant interferes with the machine's energy, ripping a freaking hole up in time which swallows her up like Kyle Reese. Also eager to put himself in danger, Chrono jumps into the portal to go after the girl that he met just a few seconds ago at the Millennial Fair. Come on, Chrono! Chrono is then spit out 400 years in the past, and eventually he runs into Marley, whom everyone believes is the queen from this era. Man, she just arrived in this time period, and she's already been made queen. You go, girl. Well, it turns out that Marley's true identity is that of Princess Nadia, and she's been mistaken for her ancestor. But just as she and Chrono are reunited, Marley vanishes into thin air. And to make matters worse, the real queen is still MIA. And if she happens to kick the bucket, Marley will cease to exist. And God only knows how many other disastrous effects it'll have on the timeline, guys. What if these events lead to a universe in which Michael Jordan was never in Space Jam? What if it ends up being Larry Bird instead? Oh my God, wait, okay, hold on. He's a great player and everything. He's just not nearly as charismatic as Michael Jordan. Guys, I wanna be like Mike. I don't wanna be like the bird. Now, Chrono, along with Luca and the rest of the friends that they make along their journey, including an anthropomorphic amphibian who talks like Thor, have to restore the timeline and stop the mysterious entity that's secretly putting all of time in grave danger. So if you know me, you'll know that I love a good time travel plot. Back to the Future is like my favorite goddamn movie of all time, and this game's plot features seven flux capacitors worth of time travel. And we're not just talking about two measly time periods here. Over the course of the game, you'll visit multiple eras, allowing you to view several events and landmarks from extremely different perspectives. This is time travel done right. Chrono Trigger's premise may sound cliched, but I assure you that this game's story ends up going places that you'd never expect. Not to mention the fact that many of your in-game choices satisfyingly end up affecting the nature and outcome of many of the game's events. And the characters, while exceedingly archetypal to some, are all downright lovable and make very lasting impressions, due to how much actual character development they receive. If you can make me care about a goofy-ass robot named... Robo, then you're doing something right. It's just one example of how Chrono Trigger seems to do the same things that just about every other RPG does, but with a little bit more finesse. Take the visuals, for example. The sprites and backgrounds are all vibrant and animated, as opposed to some of the more static and muted RPGs of the time. Thanks to various locales and time periods, there are tons of places to explore, each with their own senses of identity. And the music somehow sounds years ahead of its time, no pun intended, in both composition and sound quality. There's a track for every mood imaginable, and they're all great. But one track that sticks out to me and the rest of the internet is Robo's theme. It sounds far too similar 
two never gonna give you up to be a coincidence. Just listen to this. This can only mean one thing. Rick Astley will outlive us all by putting his brain inside a robot body. We've known each other for so long. Your heart's been aching, but you're too shy to say it. Inside, we both know what's been going on. We know the game, and we're gonna play it. Guys, those lyrics have now taken on a whole new meaning for me. Chrono Trigger's influence on the RPGs that have followed it is clear to see. It doesn't do that many things that are that different from other RPGs, but it is a masterclass in how classic RPGs should be done. Chrono Trigger is one of those games that arrogantly attempts to do it all. It experiments with plenty of novel and somewhat risky gameplay elements while also hitting every single JRPG trope in existence. But instead of ending up as a jack of all trades like so many other games that bite off more than they can chew, Chrono Trigger somehow ends up being a master of it all. When it comes to classic RPG mechanics, this game is borderline quintessential, offering all the usual amenities. And while you're a guest of Chrono Trigger, you're free to enjoy our many dungeons, woodlands, and townships, each with their own secrets and puzzles to discover. And when you tire of our main campaign, retire to one of our many side quests, where participants can interact with our lovely NPCs and earn items that you'll hoard compulsively and never ever use. And of course, guests of Chrono Trigger are free to choose between our two distinct fighting styles, classic turn-based and active time battle 2.0 in which the clock never stops and move order is determined by each participant's speed stat. Personally, I went with classic turn-based just because I like to take my time with execution in RPGs. Real talk, all weird, fancy dialects aside, Chrono Trigger delivers all the stuff you'd expect from a JRPG, but the game's creators have clearly done their homework, allowing them to present their own impeccable versions of those familiar mechanics. But things start getting hype when you encounter the game's more peculiar gameplay elements. Firstly, if you're accustomed to those few moments of downtime while the overworld transitions into the battle screen, then you'd better wake the hell up! Chrono Trigger ain't got time for that, so there's absolutely no difference between when you explore and where you fight. Moving instantly from engaging the enemy to battling that same enemy is surprisingly immersive. I know we're talking about a game where the characters are hyper-deformed and all, but you'd be surprised how this one design choice keeps you locked into the game's world. Things just seem that much more real when a consistent perspective is maintained for most of the game. The actual battling and character growth in Chrono Trigger are relatively simple, but with an astonishing amount of depth just underneath that surface. There are no skill trees or job systems here. Instead, your characters are locked into their own individual paths of progression, which are based on whatever element that character is attuned to. For example, as Chrono gains experience, he'll learn lightning-based moves, whereas Frog gets water-based attacks. These abilities are known as techs, and they're unlocked in a set order as your character gains tech points. This linear method may sound a bit restrictive or boring, but the real depth lies in how you combine these techs. Oh yeah, baby, that's right, we're Marvel vs. Capcom up in here. You can combine two separate techs from two different characters into one devastating strike known as a double tech. And there are a ton of different combinations with which you can deliver sweet, sweet death to your enemies. No, no, not you. No, dude, you're fine. You're, you're one of a kind or something. Just go stand on that side of the wall again. Jesus. You can even combine the powers of three of your characters into triple techs as well. It's through this system that the game really encourages you to explore its depths. On top of customizing your characters on an individual level with things like gear and items, the game really opens up when you start thinking about your team as a variable tool to be changed based on how you'd like to play and the challenges that lie ahead. Certain enemies are especially vulnerable to fire damage, so it's sometimes a good idea to bring Luca along with you. Then again, if you need someone with strong attack power, you might want to pop Isla into the party. 
Not to mention all the party shuffling you'll have to do if you want to see all the badass tech combinations in the game. All the potential variations keep battling fun for far longer than they would be otherwise. Many of the later techs take a buttload of points to get, which you'll only get from fighting your ass off. But getting to witness the final results makes it all worth it. Go Giant Frog Go! And on top of all of this, we haven't even talked about the awesome time travel mechanics. Over the course of the game, you'll be traveling through time more often than Doctor Who, and it feels fantastic! The scope is absolutely massive, ranging from the Dino Age of 65 million BC to the decimated future of 2300 AD. Even the smallest action in the past can have drastic ramifications in the future, providing unique gameplay opportunities that can only be solved when considering things from a fourth dimensional perspective. For example, the side quest that involves leaving Robo in the year 600 AD is absolutely bonkers. After clearing a sunken desert of enemies, Robo then offers to stay behind and cultivate the land in order to make it more fertile many years down the line. Then, when you re-enter that area hundreds of years later, Robo was still there, having long since then become inactive. But the fruits of his centuries-long labor are everywhere to see. And after you wake him up, repair him so he can join your party, and then travel back to the past, you can actually see both Robos, past and present, at the same time. This is the kind of wacky sh** that this game does with time, and there are plenty of other impressive examples throughout the entire campaign. Chrono Trigger is so solid that if we were to send a lockbox out into space that contained the very best of human examples of our culture for future generations to one day enjoy, I would nominate this game as the RPG to preserve for all time. That's not to say that it's far and away the best, but it might just be the very best example of what makes an RPG what it is. Plus, we don't want to send Final Fantasy VII out into space and potentially give any aliens ideas. Look, the last thing that I need to be known as is the guy that brought about the apocalypse by teaching Martians how to cast Meteor. As much as I love the whole time travel thing, there are unavoidable consequences to building a game that revolves around messing with history. Namely, an onslaught of multiple endings. While Chrono Trigger's campaign is a pleasure to play, going after every single one of these 13 separate endings is a quest that weighs heavily on the soul. So, in order to detail the arduous task of completing each ending, I'm gonna have to get a little bit more spoilery than usual. You've been warned. Alright, here's how it all works. The final boss of the game is actually a freaky alien thing named Lavos that's been lying dormant for thousands of years, and you're actually able to fight it very early on in the story. And you don't just get one early opportunity either. There are several points at which you can just say, fuck it, I'm out, and go straight to the final battle. Of course, doing so when you're not properly leveled is a very, very bad idea, but if you happen to be playing through a New Game Plus file, along with your buffed up stats and abilities, then taking on Lavos before lunchtime is more than feasible. You unlock different endings by confronting Lavos in different ways at different points in the story, and by choosing to go through with or neglect certain actions and choices. They range from heartwarming to dark to extremely weird. And to show off all of these endings, I welcome you all to the Chrono Trigger Ending Showcase. You guys ready? Strap yourselves in. It's spoiler country time. Ending 1, Beyond Time. This is the ending that most tend to agree that is the true canon ending, and there are a few slight mini variations on it. However, there are a few things to look out for that you should absolutely have done before beating the game. One, do the side quest in which you save Luca's mom from the accident. Two, save the Chancellor in 1000 AD in the Rainbow Shell side quest. And three, make sure you have brought back Chrono from the dead. Hey, I told you there'd be spoilers, man. So on that note, I want to quickly talk about Chrono's death. In the first bout with Lavos, Lavos ends up trying to kill the entire team. Chrono, in his heroic deeds, sacrifices himself to save the entire group. And so you, the player, are given a choice to save or not save Chrono. And in the event that you decide to save Chrono, the man at the end of time will give you a very important item, the Chrono Trigger. This item will let the team bring back one person that they love 
if that person is important for the good of the space-time continuum. Hence the name, Chrono Trigger. That's pretty f badass if you ask me. There's also two ways to get two different endings within this and the next ending. Let's call them Beyond Time A and Beyond Time B. The defining factors of getting these endings depend on how you fight Lavos, by either crashing the space-time ship the Epoch into Lavos, or deciding to fight Lavos through the bucket in the end of time or the telepod at the Millennial Fair. In Beyond Time A, if you crash the Epoch into Lavos and defeated him that way, Chrono will wake up in present-day Guardia Castle. The King and the Chancellor punk Chrono by saying that he's sentenced to death, but then they inform him and the crew that they're the guests of honor at the fair. The party then returns to Luca's telepods during the final nights of the Millennial Fair. Knowing that the time gates will soon close forever, they all bid one another farewell and depart for their eras of origin. It's bittersweet, but the Earth is saved. However, in this variation, the Epoch has been crashed into Lavos, and Marley and Chrono move on and help the King hang the New Bell in town, and by doing so, the two accidentally go flying into the sky as the credits roll. In Beyond Time B, if you didn't crash the Epoch and accessed Lavos by the telepod or the bucket, the same events will take place. However, when the team gets into the telepods to go back to their respective time zones, Chrono's mom and his cats run inside the portal and disappear, prompting Luca, Marley, and Chrono to go on a quest through time to find Chrono's mom and cats. Number two, Reunion. In Reunion A, if you defeat Lavos before you resurrect Chronos and crash the Epoch, you'll get an ending in which Marley is distraught over Chrono's death. She yells at everyone to help her bring Chrono back, yet everyone sulks and move on to their respective time zones. Later on, Marley gets revisited by the crew in an attempt to bring back Chrono. She's then whisked away from the celebration to Death Peak. There, she awaits Chrono's return until she notices his silhouette in the distance. Guys, it's true love. It knows no bounds. Yet, in Reunion B, if you defeat Lavos before you resurrect Chrono and you didn't crash the Epoch, you'll get almost the same ending with Marley walking normally back to Death's Peak to wait for Chrono. The difference being is that when the Epoch is crashed, the balloons whisk her away to Death Peak versus her walking. Now before we move on to number three, are you ready for a mind f Cause we're about to go a layer deeper. These endings, while they have variants that I explained, there's one blatant character variant that I need to explain and it's gonna get kind of complicated. Halfway through the game, you get the character Magus to join your party. Magus and Frogs are rivals. You don't actually have to let Magus join your party. He's an optional character, depending on if you kill him or not. Which means, yeah, you guessed it. There's four possible endings within these two variants, meaning there's eight subsequent endings total. Chrono lives, Magus lives, crash the Epoch. Chrono lives, Magus lives, don't crash the Epoch. Chrono lives, Magus dies, crash the Epoch. Chrono lives, Magus dies, don't crash the Epoch. Chrono dies, Magus lives, crash the Epoch. Chrono dies, Magus lives, don't crash the Epoch. Chrono dies, Magus dies, crash the Epoch. Chrono dies, Magus dies, don't crash the Epoch. I know that was a lot. It's insane, right? And a lot of you are thinking, hey, these endings aren't actually that different. No, no, they are. In the ones that involve Magus not being around, Frog turns back into human because Magus cursed Frog to begin with. Meaning that's not Frog anymore, that's a human being named Glenn. Number three, the dream project. This one is very strange, but cool. If you get onto the right telepod at the very beginning of the game and manage to defeat Lavos, you'll be warped to an area known as the End of Time, where there are NPCs everywhere that are representative of the actual developers of Chrono Trigger. Pretty tight, huh? Number four, the successor of Guardia. Using that same telepod, but after you return from the past and before you reach the end of time, will result in all of Marley's family line being turned into frog people. Hey, hey, I guess Frog got busy with Queen Lean somewhere in the timeline. Go ahead, Frog. You do you. Number five, good night. This occurs after you reach the end of time, but before learning about the legendary hero. And all it is, is three of the game's creatures messing around with each other as they try and get some sleep. Dicks. This has to be one of the worst endings in the game. 
Number six, the legendary hero. Okay, if you waited until after you learned about the legendary hero, but you haven't gotten the hero's badge yet, you'll see both a humorous recreation of the game's opening in the future and an ominous vision of Chrono and his friends laughing next to a throne. Creepy. Number seven, the unknown past. Got the hero's badge, but didn't go to Isla's party yet? Then you'll get an ending that depicts all the playable characters and their activities in their own times. Number eight, people of the times. If you've got the gay key, but Frog hasn't rejoined the party yet, then you'll get a bunch of images of random characters from the game. Again, another ending that doesn't really give you much, but hey, it's an ending. Number nine, the oath. If you return the sword known as Masamune to Frog, but haven't yet defeated Magus at his castle, then Frog leaves his friends in order to track down Magus for one final battle. It's actually kind of cool because at the very end, you see a silhouette at the top of the castle, and you don't know, is it Frog or is it Magus? Number 10, the Dino Age. Let's say you fought Magus, but you haven't yet beaten Azala and the Black Tyranno. Well, then you're gonna end up making everyone into lizard people. Yup, don't fuck around with the timeline. Number 11, what the Prophet seeks. With the Black Tyranno down, but without you having witnessed Shala entering the Ocean Palace, Magus will travel to the palace by himself to take on Lavos alone. What a badass. Number 12, Memory Lane. After you've watched Shala go into the palace, but before you've powered up Marley's pendant, you'll earn an ending in which Marley and Luca break the fourth wall and proceed to rank several male characters from the game. Scandalous. This is actually one of the only times in the game in which Chrono speaks. It's kind of weird. Number 13, Dreams Epilogue. Ah, now this one is super special. See, believe it or not, this ending is actually exclusive to the Nintendo DS version of Chrono Trigger, which means that in order to complete the game, I had to go out and buy another version of it. Not only that, I had to play through the DS version twice to get this special ending, since it's only obtainable on New Game Plus. To unlock the ending, you have to complete the three exclusive Dimensional Vortex Dungeons and then defeat the Dream Devourer. It's actually a foreshadowing of Chrono Trigger's sequel, Chrono Cross, featuring an amnesiac Magus being flung through time after the final battle, which brings an end to the Chrono Trigger ending showcase. Still here? Really? Wow, that's impressive. I've got to admit that even though I had to put in a gross amount of hours to get through every ending, each subsequent playthrough became a little bit easier, thanks to your character's progress carrying over to each subsequent playthrough. And each ending was different enough that I genuinely was curious as to how things would turn out each time I faced Lavos. I mean, lizard people, man. Lizard people. And at the end of the day, getting all of the endings wasn't even enough to bring me to my other goal of getting every character to level 99, which meant that I still had hours upon hours of good old fashioned grinding to do. But you know, once again, for some reason, I didn't mind taking my time too much. All right, hey, back up, Death. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Just don't breathe on me. You smell like a dentist's office. Okay, so Chrono Trigger isn't perfect. I mean, it's almost perfect. It's a pretty goddamn good game. Aside from its big pile of endings, there are no unlockables or rewards whatsoever. Disappointing, I know, but seeing your choices affect the characters that you've invested your time in feels really rewarding when it's all said and done. Completing this game took a lot of effort and time, but instead of feeling drained or overly salty, I'm actually still jazzed about Chrono Trigger and its world. It's so much so that I I might actually look into Chrono Cross, but not now, no, much, much later. During my full completion of Chrono Trigger, there were two deaths, 102 hours of total playtime, four full playthroughs with two of them being on the Nintendo DS version of Chrono Trigger, 116 techs unlocked, and that's not even counting the secret accessory items that give you extra techs, 
13 endings with 8 subsequent end variants earned, 693 levels gained across all 7 characters, and only 284 years until Rick Astley ascends into his final robot form. Look, I know that Chrono Trigger is a lot to handle if you're trying to do it all, and a lot of its rewards leave a lot to be desired. But the memories and feelings of Chrono and his friends? That remains long after you've turned the game off. That alone might just make the whole entire journey more than worth it. Chrono Trigger is an incredible game that I want everyone to experience. Everyone should play this game. It is so perfect. It has so many relatable things that we as human beings all communicate and relate to. Things like betrayal and heartbreak and revenge and passion and heart Gerard. and laughs Gerard. and what? What's the rating? What are you going to rate the game? I'm, I'm not going to rate the game. It's too good. And if I rate the game, then death will kill me. So I am immortal if I never rate the game. So I'm going to talk about Chrono Trigger for the next millennium. Let's go. C stands for courage. R stands for rambunctious. O stands for oxygen, which all humans need. N stands for no death. I am not going down like some punk ass bitch. <laughs> nope. Fuck you, death. You can't take me. I'm taking you out. I'm taking you out, death. You can't! Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is it Ted? Is it Ted? I killed Ted. This is a green screen. I don't... What am I? I'm in the office. This isn't real. Oh my god, I... I don't... I gotta hide the body. 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 Chrono Trigger may have a lot of endings and it may seem overwhelming to newcomers who experience this game for the very first time. I say go for it. Every ending has some focus on something new, something you didn't think about, something that would never come to your mind. It Honestly, even though it's not a completion bonus, feels like one. It's a game that says, thank you for putting your time into me, and here is your reward. So, with that in mind, guys, I give this game my ultimate completionist rating of... COMPLETE IT! COMPLETE IT! So before uh, this video is over, I just want to spend a few minutes to say thank you to so many people. I want to highlight and say thank you for all their support over the years. 200 episodes, five and a half years, so many channels, uh, so many fun projects. There's so many people to thank, and I'm going to try and, and, and mention everyone. If I forget you uh, and you're watching this, know that I'm really sorry. I'm trying just on the top of my head to get through everyone uh, that's really helped me get here. I want to say thank you to Greg Wilmot for all of the hard work and support that he gave me in the first few years of the show. I want to say thank you to Alex Fasciani, who's been a great pillar of support uh, and uh, with Beard Bros and B3 and everything else in between. I want to say thank you to Kelly Whistler, who has been an incredible person to work with. It's been fun seeing her bloom in the Pokemon space, and I'm so happy for the two of them. I want to say thank you to Amanda Flagg for being a great partner who believes in me and and puts up with my bullcrap all the time. Um, I want to say thank you to my brother, who he and I fight every single day, but we always stride and push forward to make something fun, and having his support means the world. I want to thank my family, uh, everyone who does and doesn't watch the show, both the media and far, all the way to Lebanon. I want to say thank you to uh, everyone here in the office, and to the long list, uh, Brett, who has been an incredible head writer in the past few years, uh, Pat, Chris, Ted, Bradley, Mark Carr, uh, Dylan, Andrea, uh, Michael Santel, Andrew Campbell, uh, Fraser Presidon, 
Al Galetti, without you guys, uh, I would have crumbled a long time ago, and the support that you've given me has been overwhelming, and I'm so lucky to have you guys in my life. I want to say thank you to our office mates who have been renting from us, uh, Dodger from Press Start to Continue, Jesse Cox, Octopimp, uh, Strippin'. They have been so fun to work with, and it's infectious seeing their passion, and it challenges me to do better each and every single week. I want to say thank you to our TOVG partners, Jordan Weedman, um, Jimmy Sunder. I want to say thank you to Jordan Underneath, and to Kite Tails. I want to say thank you to Javed, who has been uh, so patient and so focused in helping us make uh, the completionist not one video gamer look so retro but new. Um, I want to say thank you to all of my community members, which involves a lot of people. Uh, the original Team Beardman crew, Soa, uh, Brandon, Steve, Dave, uh, the Beard Boys, Tatum, Warren, uh, Zach, Dev. Oh, Dev, <laughs> you're so goddamn funny. Uh, Hilda, um, I want to say thank you to, oh my gosh, Normal Boots. Uh, I want to say thank you to, uh, uh, to Jontron, who has been my high school buddy, who pushed me through everything. I want to say thank you to Peanut Butter Gamer Austin for really believing in me. I want to say thank you to Pro Jared, who is the most ambitious and passionate guy I've met, who has really pushed me to my limit in such incredible capacities. I want, to thank, I want to say thank you to Continue. I want to say thank you to uh, Digital Gaming Shane. I want to give the biggest and most sincere thank you to Satchel Drakes, who started out as a fan and is now my brother in so many different ways. He has made the show look cooler and cooler every single year, and without his passion and direction and advice, uh, I would have fallen apart many a times. Um, I want to say thank you to all of the artists who have helped out with the show. Carlos Padilla, who has been animating since day one on the original episode of The Completionist. I want to say thank you to uh, Dan Jones, who makes Beer Bros look so much more important than it is and has helped create such an awesome community. He's actually now animating for The Completionist. And we're actually welcoming a new artist, uh, Jetpack Bragan, who will be taking over for Beer Bros soon. Uh, I want to say thank you to Wyatt, who's been doing an incredible job on The Completionist and will still help out going forward in so many different ways. Whew! Uh, I want to say thank you to uh, all of the Patreon folk and all of the Game Wisp folk who have been putting in their money to keep this ship going. I want to say thank you to um, Nintendo and Ubisoft and all of the companies we've worked with. I want to say thank you to Grant Kirkhope. I want to say thank you to uh, uh, Jay Kaufman, uh, who helped get us motivated to push forward with B3 and really helped us get it to what it should be. I want to say thank you to every single YouTuber I've ever collaborated with. More importantly, I want to say thank you to some of the ones that stand out to me as, as mentors. Proton John, Matt Pat, uh, Game Grumps, Aaron, you've been such a pillar and I really love talking to you. Um, I want to say thank you. I feel like I miss so many people and, and, and uh, this is going on for too long. Uh, I want to say thank you to the Yeti for doing all the merch stuff for us every single time that we do it, and, uh, oh, I've missed so many people, that's okay. More importantly, um, I want to say thank you to all of you. I know that, uh, this has been a ship that has changed and evolved and has become so many different things, but what it has become, what it has evolved, is something that I'm so proud of, and... I want to say I'll be here for 200 more games. I want to say I'll be here for a thousand games. Uh, I, I really do. And I'm going to try my best. And I know that as long as you guys are here with me, that I will never give up. I'll never stop fighting. And uh, I'll never, ever, ever walk away without letting you guys know that uh, I'm out. So... That's all time here for today, guys. So please, as always, let me know what you thought about today's episode somewhere on the internet. Uh, today, complete a game. Just pick any game you love, go complete it. And if you don't want to complete a game, do what I have been doing for the past five and a half years. Share your experience with someone you love. Sit them down and say, hey, this is a game that you should complete because it changed my life and it'll one day change, it'll one day change yours. Like it's changed, like how every game has changed mine every week. That's it, that's all. I'll see you next week. Bye.